Today we're talking about very important story and art elements that will make for a great short story on Webtoon. Hey, Walter here, doing what I can to make comics easier by demystifying the process because it shouldn't be overwhelming to tell your story. And I know making your first few webtoons, webcomics, comics, whatever you want to call it, can be very daunting. We're always questioning whether we're doing it right or not. So I'm going to go over a few basics about storytelling and art that will really make your comic shine. And I've covered some of these topics in more detail in other videos, so I'll put a link to those in the description below. And I'm always making new videos about comics and artwork, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to catch those. But first, let's go over some important story elements that I think you'll need. Pretty much every story is going to have a problem and a solution. An evil king rules the land, a brave princess overthrows him, Joe doesn't want to go to work, so he robs a bank or, you know, just calls in sick. Basically, the problem sets up the story to hook the reader and the solution concludes and solves the problem so the reader doesn't feel like they wasted their time. And, you know, sometimes the solution might not be a solution. It could actually be a consequence, but it's basically an A to B thing. A sets up B and B concludes A. And you don't only want to think about this for your entire story. You want to think about this from like episode to episode. You start off the episode with a setup and then you somehow conclude that in a way at the end of the episode, but leaving it with maybe the problem that starts off the next episode. You, you kind of like get this flow going where you have like these like mini um, climaxes in each episode, possibly ending on a climax to keep the reader hooked. So they can't resist going and reading the next episode. One of the big ways to move a story forward is dialogue. And I think the trick to writing good dialogue is to act it out. Get in the shoes of your characters and read your dialogue out loud. If it sounds weird when you're saying it, it's most likely going to be weird for the reader when they're reading it. And then another really good thing to do when you're writing dialogue is to stay away from simple questions or one word questions to move the dialogue forward. Like for example, you can't go in there. Why? It's full of zombies. How? Joe let them in. Oh my God, we'll never escape. How do we get out? I've got an idea. How? Follow me. Like that's not very entertaining dialogue, so let's change it to, Joe let all the zombies into that room. Oh my God, there's no way we're getting out now. I've got an idea, follow me. So I think that's way more exciting and there's also less panels, less words to read. The whole thing just moves more energetically. The pacing is faster. If you start adding a lot of panels and a lot of words to read, it's gonna slow the pacing down. And so when you're trying to do something energetic or something fast, that is the exact opposite of what you want. All right, so that's it for story. Let's move on to art. One of the most important aspects of comic book art, I would almost say requirement, is clarity of storytelling. Cool characters, big action, detailed backgrounds, like all of that stuff is really cool. But what is really important, what all the cool kids are focusing on is storytelling. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what I mean by that is a reader needs to be able to look at a panel and instantly know what's going on. They get all the information they need. They get the, the mood, the context. It sets up the next panel. If crazy camera angles, dynamic foreshortening confuses the reader at all, it is actually hurting the story that we're trying to tell. Now, a great way to help the story we're trying to tell is the establishing shot. Now, this is a shot that you would draw. It's a wide angle of, you know, a building, a school, a mall, a mountain, a castle. Uh, you start the scene off with the establishing shot. This lets the reader know where the characters are and gives context to the situation. Like imagine having two characters having a conversation in a house or at school or in a prison. The vibe is completely different and the conversation takes on a whole new meaning. The other bonus of drawing an establishing shot is that you don't have to draw as much of the background in the remaining panels because the reader will already know where they are and their imaginations will fill that in. If your scene is a little long, you might have to draw some extra background like mini establishing shots in the middle of the scene just to remind the reader of where they are. In general, when you're drawing your comic, you should try to vary 
your camera angles and your camera distances anyways. You don't want to just do all like headshots, you know, pull further back so you can see more of the pose of the body or zoom in and get a close up of the eyes so you can really see that emotion. And it doesn't always have to be the character that you're focusing on. You could focus on an object that they're talking about. You could focus on a painting in the background if it sets the mood or a clenched fist to really show like what that character is feeling. Speaking of what the character is feeling, another powerful tool of comic book art is character acting. This is drawing your character's feeling emotion. We want the reader to be able to look at a panel and know exactly what that character is feeling without even reading the dialogue. The eyes, the mouth, even the hands go a long way in telling the story of what that character is feeling. And we don't wanna just draw our characters like with dead faces. You know, draw them angry or happy or sad, just anything. Just like with the dialogue, where I told you to read the dialogue out loud, you can also act out your scenes and pay attention to what your body is doing. How are your whole shoulders moving? What are you doing with your hands? What is your face doing? And then draw your character doing those exact same things and you will have better character acting and thus better storytelling. Color is also a powerful storytelling tool. You can instantly give the reader of a cold, blue, somber feeling or a warm, bright orange action scene. And you can also draw the reader's eye to a specific focal point using contrast of hue and saturation of color and values. Last thing is lettering. Lettering can also direct the eye, so pay attention to the path that your lettering will take. You can direct the reader to important aspects and details of your comic art, but you can also unintentionally uh, direct them away from important details. So you need to pay attention to how the letters are working and your lettering shouldn't be an afterthought. You should be thinking about where your lettering balloons are gonna go when you're doing the initial sketches, the initial thumbnails of all of your panels. And then lettering style can also have a huge impact on how your story comes across. I prefer simple, subtle lettering. Some people prefer in-your-face lettering. Each style is going to have a different impact, so you kinda have to choose which style you want. I talk about lettering in more detail in a lot of videos. I love talking about lettering. I could talk about it for hours. So I'm gonna stop myself here. Just go check out those other videos if you wanna know more. So there are all the important aspects of comic book storytelling that I think you need to keep in mind for making your first few comics. Of course, there's a ton of other stuff that go into making comics. So if there's an important aspect that you think I missed, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to keep making comics easier, make sure you hit that subscribe button and catch another video for more sweet, sweet goodness. Peace.